Mike Moore Media, the first place to hear Rockingham County news and information. Mark Bullins is Water and Sewer Construction Projects Manager for the City of Eden. Mark's in our studio today to tell us about a very important project that's coming up this week in Eden. Hey, Mark, how you doing? I'm doing great, Mike. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Well, we want to get a little background first before we talk about the project. So let's let's go back a few months. All right, let's do that. Back in the week of uh, May 19th to May 21st, earlier this year, we had a huge storm event where we about seven inches of rain fell. Mm-hmm. And it fell here in northwest North Carolina and in southwest Virginia. And it caused a lot of flooding at that time with local rivers and streams. The following Sunday, I was topped off from 8 to 9 p.m. with another two inches of rain. Yeah. And that filled up Philpot Dam to the point that it was actually flowing over the spillway. Well, that water would increase the water level already in the overflowing Smith River to the point that it would carry logs and trees downstream to the Smith River trestle just north of Spray Cotton Mill. A lot of water coming down real fast. Yes, sir. A lot of water. Yeah. And in the process, it knocked down about 150 feet of pipe, laying it down in the river and causing sewer to flow directly into the Smith. Mm Mm-hmm. The last time something like this happened was back in 1971. At that time, they were able to take a crane across the railroad trestle and actually pick the pipe up and set it back up on the piers and reattach it. Mm -hmm. Well, after the pipe was knocked down the following day, the city got bypass pumping set up. And that took a while because we had to actually get a pipe, a piece of polyethylene pipe welded together, set across the river with couplings and our own pump set down in the manhole with a hydraulic unit to run the pump. During the time that the the uh, pipe was in the river and before we got bypass pumping going, we lost about 320,000 gallons of raw sewage. Hmm. Well, once we got bypass pumping set up, the next thing to do was try to see what we we're going to do about getting this problem repaired. Uh, emergency contract is what we usually look for to try to find a contractor who can do the work you know readily and effectively Mm -hmm. sure um but we also knew because it was still raining we still had several storm events it would be a while before even a contractor get out there to get the work done and we talked to a couple of contractors but the city ended up going with yates construction company of stokesdale to replace the sewer pipe and partially because the process that they were using to repair the pipe or the method they were going to be using. They're going to use a large helicopter to carry the pipe, carry the old pipe out and the debris out, and then put the new pipe in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, let, let's talk about that then. Um, why we, we've, uh, we're moving from the um, emergency situation here to a permanent solution. Uh, so why is the city and the H construction uh, using this helicopter? Why, why is that absolutely necessary? Well, I wouldn't say it was absolutely necessary, but it solved several problems. Okay. It was actually Bobby Yates that, that suggested the idea. And when the city asked him for we went ahead and asked him for a quote and said, hey, you know, we want to see how cost effective this is. You know, sure. can we afford this? Mm-hmm. And after we got the quote, it was obvious that it was comparable to doing, you know, conventional repair methods. Mm-hmm. Also, using the helicopter solves a series of problems. And this was what really got us because... You know, we were talking about, in conventional methods, building a road out across the river and then taking the road back up. When we were looking at 20 days minimum for this process. Wow. Uh, Also, you're probably looking at a permit from the Corps to do this construction Mm -hmm. if you have to build the road and possible, you know, environmental impact studies. Yeah. This eliminates all those problems. Okay. And there was no way to use the railroad trestle because... It hadn't been maintained in decades, and we don't know what much weight it could support from above. So there was mm-hmm. no way it could really be used. Any other suggested meth- method, we c- we just couldn't find anything that really worked for us. But the helicopter seemed like the solution to all those problems. Okay, seems like it to me too. And this is going to uh, to start tomorrow, and will take how long? It'll take approximately two days, according to Air Crane and Yates Construction. Okay. 
Tell us about uh, uh, the company, um, the helicopter. Where is it coming from and a little bit of background there? Well, the company uh, that Yates is working with is called Air Crane, and they're out of uh, Barrow County Airport, and the town is Winder, Georgia. Uh, if you look at the side of their helicopter, though, it says Hotlanta, Georgia. <laughs> yeah. and that's H-O-T-L-A-N-T-A, mm-hmm. and I find that amusing. That's good. Um, that's a company that's been around since about 1993, and they use what is known as the Korsky S-61 helicopter. Mm-hmm. And it's commonly used by the HVAC industry to install new central heating and air units on top of tall buildings. Um, it's also used to pour concrete, place signage, setting steel. The unit's been used for disaster relief, among other areas. It is also interesting. Air Crane provides fire suppression services for the uh, federal and state agencies, from most of the southern tip of Florida to the northern tips of Alaska. Wow. Um, They've completed jobs and provide support to the U.S. Forest Service. Uh, Office of Aircraft Services, Department of Defense, FEMA, EPA has used them. Soil and Conservation have used them. So there are a lot of uh, big um, companies uh, and, and government agencies using them. And now we'll add City of Eden to that list. Absolutely. A, a lot of people are interested in the, uh, in the aircraft itself. So tell us about that, Mark. Well, some people, they've asked me if the aircraft was Russian. I said it's actually a uh, Russian immigrant that started Sikorsky Aircraft in Connecticut uh, when he left what became the Soviet Union at the time that occurred. Hmm, Okay. Um, And he specialized in heavy aircraft. The helicopter itself is 17 and a half foot long and 58 58 feet and 11 inches long. It has two... 1,500 horsepower GE T-58 engines, and it can carry about 4,500 pounds. Now, put that in perspective, a 40-foot piece of steel pipe, which is the size that we're going to be installing, Mm -hmm. or Yates will be installing as they go across the river, weighs about half that. Okay. Wow, this is is a big big helicopter that's uh, coming in for this work. Uh, And and the the project is going to start tomorrow, so let's, let's get a timeline on that, Mark. Okay. Um, at, in the morning, about 7.15 a.m., mm-hmm. Yates Construction will be meeting with Air Crane and then discuss safety. Immediately after that, they're going to begin operations. Air Crane will be using this Korsky to start removing all the trees. And they'll begin at the canal side on the west side of the river and work their way back across the east side, getting the uh, trees out. Also during this time... Philpot Dam will be holding back as much water as they can for us so that the crews can work in and around the riverbed. And while that water is being held back, also what water has to be let through for Martinsville and for the uh, trout hatchery downstream, they're going to try to divert it through the canal. Mm -hmm. During that time, crews from Yates will be out there working in the riverbed they're going to uh, get the uh, pipe that's washed off the piers into sections that can be to- hauled out by the helicopter and then taking the other pipe off the piers that are they're still intact on the piers of, of the uh, trestle itself. Okay. So there's a lot of work going on in a lot of different ways there. There is, and it's all be hap- it will all be happening at one time. Yeah, yeah. A lot of uh, coordination for sure. Um, tell us about... Um, uh, the the pipe is the city having all of the pipe replaced. Um, uh, how how's that working there? Well, the the city made a decision early on. Once we saw the cost to replace the pipe that had washed off, mm-hmm. we decided we better go see what the rest of the pipe looked at looked like. So we sent a crew out there to inspect it. We looked at the pipe and found out there was some evidence of corrosion from sewer gas. The pipe's 66 years old, so we we had our suspicions ahead of time. Yeah. And since we had the opportunity, uh, we figured it was time to go ahead and replace it all the way across and possibly even make it more secure than it was. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so this will be uh, uh, long-term, should serve us well for years to come. It's That's our hope. <laughs> yeah. Because when they attach this new pipe, they're going to be using like three-inch steel bands to attach it to the piers. Mm-hmm. 
But one thing I did not mention was they will be putting new threaded studs in those piers for those steel bands to help secure them onto the piers. At present, the pipe's being held on with steel cable. Okay. Uh, and, and it's been fairly effective for the last 66 years. But yeah. we're hoping these three-inch wide bands will hold it in place better. Well, next time we have a log jam that runs into our sewer pipe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, it sounds like uh, this job is being done right from start to finish. Um, if people are interested in seeing these, uh, the, the helicopter, and uh, can, is there any vantage point there at all where we can see some of this? I know we can't be right there at the construction site. Um, I, I would uh, suggest and come, trying to go to the backside of the mall area or, or somewhere away from uh, Van Buren Road, NC-14, because we need to keep that road clear. Um, you can't get down into the job site for obvious reasons. Yeah. Uh, and you need to where a police are going to be patrolling the area to make sure that 14 stays clear, as well as the access areas that go into the railroad trestle. So please stay away from those areas. Mm -hmm. uh, try to find somewhere safe that's out of other people's ways for you to watch this. But my, uh, my best guess right now would be somewhere on the back side of the mall from that area you should be okay. able to see most things very good well the, the project starts tomorrow and will be uh, tell us again about how long each day a couple of days involved you said yeah it's gonna be a couple of days um uh, they'll start like i said in the morning some prior after seven fifteen, probably at seven thirty, and they will probably work to around noon no lot maybe a little later it depends on when the storms look like they'll start rolling in mm -hmm. the the reason for working in the mornings is to try to avoid any thunderstorms and electric storms that could affect the helicopter operations mm -hmm. well and like you said you've had um uh someone there operating this uh situation uh, 24 hours uh, 24 7 since all this started so we'll be uh getting more to a permanent situation and that will not be having to happen anymore oh yes we, we've spent some money in overtime in yeah. the last couple of months to keep those pumps manned constantly yeah well you know there, there's so much involved in uh in what you do and um in, in water and sewer that uh, we all take for granted so uh and then we have an emergency situation like this and it, it puts uh, uh more work on everybody but i want to thank you and your department and everybody involved for uh, for being there for us uh, 24 7 really all the time thank you for that you're welcome and thank you mike for having me i appreciate it uh, mark bullens uh, telling us about this uh, special project that's uh, going to start uh, tomorrow morning uh, monday morning a uh, couple of days involved at least mark bullens is water and sewer construction projects manager for the city of eden